What up, what up, that's day in it. In this video, I'm going to be telling you the importance of diet breaks and refeed days, bro. So just cheat days, whatever you want to call this shit. So anyway, let's start off with insulin. And this is such an important topic if you're going on a diet or anything like that, you need to understand this. This is basically the scientific shit, the hormones that's going in your body and the real importance of refeed days and how you can restore them. So keep this in mind. Basically, how you can feel better. So insulin, you need to understand that when we diet, insulin drops, we become insulin resistant, meaning we spare the glucose and use fat as fuel, right? So basically when insulin drops, it releases the fat or it just releases the lock or fat mobilization. So we increase fat mobilization and we all know what that means. We start burning more fat, we start losing fat. So that's basically the simple term of insulin when it drops. Also insulin has got a relationship with testosterone. And when the insulin drops, the testosterone drops as well. And that always happens when dieting in men, obviously testosterone drops, which means they lose their sex drive. Same with women when they're on a menstrual strike, strike, a menstrual, why can't I say this? Menstrual cycle when they're on that um, and they're dieting hard, that shit stops as well. So keep that in mind. Now cortisol, when cortisol increases, and this is a stress hormone, if you don't know already, like I'm getting stressed now. <laughs> but anyway, when you're dieting, it obviously does put a stress on your body as well, so it makes sense. Cortisol does increase as well. And when cortisol increases, and this is not a good thing, it actually stimulates protein for fuel instead of glucose. Does that make sense? Yeah, it stimulates to use protein for fuel instead of glucose, and glucose is normally the primary source of fuel right, when we're not under eating and shit like this. So already you could tell this is not really a good thing. As well as this, cortisol prevents the hormone, or not the hormone, the amino acid leucine from stimulating protein synthesis. Also, it inhibits and enhances protein breakdown, right? So protein synthesis, we want it like this to build muscle, but in fact, it's actually preventing protein synthesis, bang, and it's improving or enhancing protein breakdown. So we're going in a negative, we're going catabolic right here. So that's basically what cortisol does, right? So we have insulin drops, cortisol stress hormone increases, right? So just remember that, insulin, cortisol. Now leptin, 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 leptin. Such an important hormone. So one thing as well, when leptin levels drop, this happens. Okay, so it will have effect on various of tissues like muscle, liver, and fat cells, right? So that's basically the simple terms of leptin. Now, one thing you also have to understand is that a hormone in the stomach called ghrelin, <clears throat> this shit increases as well. So basically, so far we have insulin drops, cortisol increases, leptin decreases, and now ghrelin increases, right? So when ghrelin increases, it sends a signal to your brain, and this is not a good thing, right? This is not good. It sends a signal to your brain, the lateral hypothalamus, <clears throat> where basically it tells you your body's hungry. It's just, like you're dieting, or oh, oh, I'm feeling hungry all the time. This is when the ghrelin level increases, right? So basically, <clears throat> coming towards, why can't I speak, man? What's going on here? Going towards the end of the video, now I'm going to summarize this shit up for you and tell you how long and why you need to actually have these diet breaks. So, before we have, at the start, we have insulin drops, your body becomes insulin resistant, sparing the glucose and using the fat cells. Then cortisol increases, remember the stress hormone, actually enhancing protein breakdown, preventing protein synthesis. And now we have leptin, leptin drops, and then ghrelin increases. And basically, you, you can understand, right? The things that increase ghrelin um, and cortisol have almost like, they all have uh, negative effects and positive effects, right? Because you, if they're all negative, then what's the point of dieting? It's positive effects because you lose fat. However, as you can already kind of get the gist of it, testosterone and cortisol, both of those hormones are very, very important when trying to build muscle as well more testosterone i guess but anyway those two hormones they really 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 do help us go into the catabolic stage right like not that we actually need help to go catabolic meaning we break muscle down which is really not what we want but basically cortisol testosterone that shit affects the shit out of us when we die so anyway those are the simple terms basically all the hormones and shit that happens when we are dieting how they drop how they increase so now, let's get into the important shit of the video. So why do you need to have cheat days, diet breaks, a maintenance diet or breaks, whatever you want to call this stuff? Here's why. First of all, you need to understand that some people are telling you to have like 12 hours, 24 hours, a cheat meal, that's insane. How are you gonna recover from all these like hormones dropping all the way down and having one little cheat meal and then raise all the way back up? That does not make any sense to me whatsoever. So. What I'm going to give you, and I know everyone's looking for a direct answer, not that I can give you a direct answer, and here's why. 
First of all, you need to understand that everyone is in different situations. For example, say um, person A is dieting for two weeks, person B has been dieting for six weeks, person C has been going really aggressive, person A is taking a slower, like there's all different effects that can, or different variables that play a part in this. However, and just as a standard approach, I guess if you go maybe, uh, let's say, three to four weeks dieting, uh, without even having any cheat days and anything like this so three to four weeks straight dieting and just let's say a, a 300 to 500 calorie deficit around there per day we would probably have a three to four day um, diet break or refeed days or even a little bit longer right so it's very important as well to understand your body right i can't tell you an exact number because i don't know what you're doing or the variables that's going in but i'm just going to throw a rough baseline out here probably three to four three to five days right and one thing that's very important, I'm speaking fast again on that. One thing that's very, very important is that when you take these diet refeed days, you need to be sensible, right? Because a lot of people go on a diet for, say, four weeks, they lose a lot of fat, and then they're like, okay, refeed, refeed, refeed. Let me eat all I can see, all, all the things in my stomach. And don't get me wrong, I made this mistake as well, so I learned from my mistakes, right? I, I do dieting really well. When it came to my refeed day, my cheat day, the shit will blow up, right? So be kind of sensible. Maybe just eat a maintenance, uh, maybe a bit above maintenance, really increase the carbohydrate intake. So your leptin levels will also increase and you'll feel a little bit better and all the other hormones will also increase a little bit more. So you'll actually feel a lot better. And in fact, this actually happened to me a few months ago, even a few weeks ago. I went on a two week uh, mini cut, which I probably need to do soon because I'm getting quite chubby. But anyway, so a two week mini cut and I went kind of aggressive. I did about 700 calories per day, um, like deficit. And also at the last week I did about three, three cardio sessions per, per week. And for me, that's a lot, so chill here. So I was in a quite a big deficit and by the second week, uh, I think I, I went, I was gonna actually went two weeks and a half, whatever. But anyway, just the, the last day before I ended the diet, I started feeling like shit, man. I started feeling so bad, almost worse than I felt when I was at 9% body fat because I haven't had, I didn't have a cheat day or a diet break or anything like that. So the next day, or just before I ended my diet, the next day I went on a, a, a kind of a binge, right? I ate chocolate cookies, donuts, all this kind of shit. And the next day I was like, I was ready to go. I could diet once again, right? Because my hormone levels probably increase a little bit more and just psychologically, right? One main fact is psychologically because we all we all have these like, what are they called? Cravings, how did I forget that? We all have these cravings when we've got diets and it's so, so important. Now we actually get rid of them and you get rid of them by actually eating the food you want eventually, right? I say eventually because you can't just go on a diet and oh, full of cookies, eat that because you're never going to lose weight. However, the reason why, just let me let me explain this actually. So the reason why, when you're eating normally, like for example, I'm now I'm eating healthy, quote unquote healthy, right? I'm not eating any junk food stuff like this. I'm bulking. I'm not getting any cravings, right? Because I'm getting enough nutrients and calories in my body. Whereas when you're under eating, all these hormone levels start dropping, stuff like this, metabolic slowdown happens, and you just start feeling like shit. One more thing before I end this video. The reason why metabolic slowdown happens, and this happens like three to four days after you start a diet. And you you need to understand that as well, your central nervous system output, it decreases as well. And why do I keep digressing actually? I don't know, I just don't know. Where was I actually? Yeah, metabolic still don't happen because you need to understand evolution. Whoa, this video's going on for a long time. So evolution, evolution is when, obviously it was apes and we couldn't even walk properly, then we, like, we got into humans and stuff like this. But when we were cavemen and shit like this, we would go hours and hours without eating, we would lay there to preserve energy, and then finally when we saw something, we hunted that shit down. And that's basically, our bodies are still like this today, it's evolution, right? So, metabolic slowdown happens, and your hormones decrease because it's trying to keep your body alive, right? And that's why after three to four days of losing fat, you're like, yeah, man, I'm doing good. And then all of a sudden it starts going slow and slow and slow because metabolic slowdown. That's, it could actually be like a 20% decrease, right, after like one day. So say, for example, your, your diet calories or the amount of calories that you needed to eat per day to lose weight was 2,500. 20% of that would, you need to, you need to eat what's 20% of 2,500. I don't know, I don't do maths in public, but that's your number. And then that's how many calories you now need to eat per day to lose weight after like three to four days, right? That's not an exact number, but that shows you how quickly metabolic slowdown happens just to keep you alive, to pre preserve your beautiful body, right? So anyway, 
Man, this video was long. Let me know if you've watched this video to this point, because I'd be so interested if someone did. Uh, if, if no one leaves me a comment, man, you're going to hurt me. So, anyway, subscribe to the channel down below if you enjoyed this video, if you found it useful, informative, and if you go on a diet, now you know what shit happens in your body. And like I always say, diet break, not always say, <laughs> why do I always say that? Like a refeed day, a maintenance diet, or anything like this, a cheat day even, they really, really are important. And mainly, like I said, I just threw a rough number out there, three to four weeks of dieting with no cheat days, blah, 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 blah. I'd recommend about three to four days of getting, just refeed yourself, getting back on track, especially psychologically. So that's enough of me talking like hours and hours and hours, or a few minutes anyway. So stay positive, stay smiling. As always, I'll see you in the next one.